Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about Fedora 40. The beta will be announced in just a few hours or a few minutes. I don't know. It's a really exciting time and along with Fedora 40, we have GNOME 46 with massive changes both above and under the hood and I'm really excited to share all of these with you. So without wasting any time, let's quickly dive right in. Okay, so we're gonna begin with a with the installation of Fedora Linux 40, but if you are not interested, if you just wanna know about the top features and whatever is new this time around, feel free to skip ahead. There are going to be chapters, so look out for those, watch what you like, and I'd appreciate it if you watch the entire video. By default, English, United States, that's what we have. And this is unstable pre-release software, which is absolutely fine, I do not care. And by default, English US, date and time. So we got to change this to Africa, Americas, Asia, Asia, and it should be Kolkata. Should be this one. Yeah. Okay. Done. The new Anaconda installer, I guess it was delayed back to Fedora 41, but that's okay. A 20 gig uh, partition. So we're going to go ahead and begin installation. So after you install, this is what you're greeted with. It took about three to four minutes to be very honest. I have an Intel i5 12th generation laptop edition, so uh, it was not that big of a deal. So location services, automatic problem reporting are both enabled by default. Uh, it's okay. We're going to we're going to keep it at enabled. And what you would really want to do is enable third-party repositories because Fedora does not provide many of the useful things that you might need in your day-to-day -day life that are uh, proprietary and they don't want to fall into a legal trouble so just, they just don't provide it. Now in the about you section they have tentatively updated the avatar system so wow. I really like these. Uh, let's just go with the airplane because I feel like that's more like my vibe. Now we're going to enter our name. I'm going to leave the username at the default. We're not going to do an enterprise login, so that's fine. And we're going to set a password. All done. So now we can start using Fedora Linux. So welcome to Fedora Linux Workstation Edition. We're going to take the tour. It's going to be very short. We'll get an overview, press the super key to see open windows and apps. So you do that, you press this and you get everything. So that's okay. And you can just type to search. So you press your start menu and then you can just do this. You can just search any, anywhere in the entire system from files to calculations to um, anything really. And you also have workspaces. So this is what you have, multiple workspaces. They are very handy and it's dynamic by default. So uh, if you have, let's say files, so you could do this. You could drag files over to a different workspace and now you have three workspaces, one with the application that you chose. And you also have a touchpad, but I can't, I don't have a touchpad with me right now, so I can't show it to you. And these are very good gesture support. One is to one gesture support is provided by Fedora and Gnome, so that's really good. Okay, so before I start talking about what's new in Gnome 46 that comes with Fedora 40, Let's just get a feel for the system. So you, we have pill shaped icon list. So inside this, you have a screen capture utility. So you have selection screen window and you can either video record the screen or you can capture. And this is really, really good. I really love this. And you also have settings and you can lock the computer. You can power it down. You can have uh, internet. So this is where your internet shows up. This is showing up as wired because it is running inside a virtual machine and power mode is balanced or power saver. I believe if you install it on bare metal, you would also get high performance and you have dark style. At the middle is your notification. Now this has been revamped with the GNOME 46, but I don't have notifications unfortunately, but they are of a card style and they look pretty good. You can also enable or disable do not disturb. You can clear notifications. You have your calendar, pretty obvious things. You can also select a weather location. You can add world clocks if you need to. And another big change is, well, not big, but it's small, but big in its own way, is that the workspace that you are on by default, it's going to be a pill and the other one is going to be a dot. So that's, that's pretty good. And you already saw that it comes with a dock at the bottom, a little too big for my liking, but it's okay. You can always change it with GNOME extensions. That's not a big deal. And you have a very limited, but very useful set of apps that are included by default. 
including Fedora Media Writer. So this is for creating um, ISOs, maps, clocks, weather, pretty much self-explanatory. You have a new app called Camera, which replaces Cheese that was in Fedora 39. And this is, this is a really good app, by the way, the, the icon looks pretty good. You have Fedora Office, uh, I mean, you have LibreOffice and the icons are great. Settings, boxes, this is what I use to run my uh, Linux distributions, terminal. And I bet you that this is not console. Man, I have been waiting for console for a really long time, but it's still not here. Interesting. Maybe it's not feature complete. I don't know, but um, it's okay. I mean, the old one is functional as well. So let's just not get too riled up about that. You also have utilities. So disk usage analyzer, connections, disks, uh, special characters, image viewer, pretty much standard stuff. And yeah, that's it for the basic Linux desktop. So let's now quickly dive in and talk about what's new this time with uh, GNOME 46. So GNOME 46, also known as Kathmandu, was announced on March 20, 2024. I made a video a long time ago, about uh, like around one and a half months ago when it was announced. So let's talk about some of the few new things, okay? So the first thing is going to be inside files. Now files, as always, ever since GNOME 40 launched, it looked amazing. One of the new things this time around is a universal search or search everywhere. So you have two things. You can either search everywhere. So the path bar changes to this or you can enter your path or you can just search in the current folder, which it will show you if you hover above the icon. So that's pretty good. Apart from this, they have significantly refactored the code during the development of GNOME 46 for the files app and has included a very, very welcome performance upgrade. Now, especially in the category of switching between grid view and list view earlier, this was not instantaneous. It would take a lot of time, not that much, but it would take some time. But now this, as you can see, is instantaneous. But also I don't have a ton of stuff in here. This is a fresh install, so uh, maybe we can't judge it too hard over here, but it's good. And apart from that, you also have a fantastic set of other smaller improvements. So you can now search for preferences. So now you can search within the files app with the preferences to locate specific settings. You also get detailed date and time. So the files preferences now includes an option to show the date and time in a more comprehensive and consistent format. So let's just go to preferences. And here you can see that you have sort folders before files, which I think is really interesting. And I like to have it, I guess, this is the default option in Windows and I've always been just accustomed to it. You also have expandable folders in list view and action to open items is double click. I'm never gonna change it to single click, but if some of you guys are out there, please mention down below in the comments. But I believe double click is the default option for good measure and for a lot of sane people. You also have optional context menu actions. So you have create link and you can delete something permanently. Not really recommended, which is why it's turned off by default, but you do you, it's your computer after all. And in performance, so you have a couple of features, uh, three features, but a, they mentioned clearly that these features may cause slowdowns in excess network usage, especially when browsing files outside of this computer, which is on a remote server. So do this at your own risk. So you can search subfolders on the network as well. All locations would refer to that. Now, the thing that we were looking for is the date and time format. So this was, I guess, what was here before. So today, 7.50 PM and the date. And now you also have a detailed uh, showing type. So that would be the entire date and the time, which I guess it would look a little bit cluttered, but uh, it's okay if this is your jam, then this is what you, you will do. You also have grid view captions to so add information will be displayed beneath file and folder names. More information will appear when zooming closer. So you have first and a lot of things for second. I believe the same options for third. Again, the same options. No, I'm, I'm not going to do anything by default. Uh, I think it looks OK. And as you can see, we now have the date and time in a completely different format. I love the earlier one, but if this is your jam, this is what you're going to do. Another thing which is really important this time around is uh, let's just go to the settings app and we can talk about it. Okay, so if you have used GNOME in the past two to three years, you're going to be very, I guess not two to three years, I guess in the last two years, you're going to be very familiar with this settings page. Now there have been a couple of changes. So the first uh, change is inside system. 
and right now it looks different so let's just go to about and the device name as you can see is fedora workstation edition pre-release let's just go to system details and this is what my linux is uh, 12th gen intel software rendering uh, which is the graphics because it's a vm and the best thing about it is it's running on linux 6.8 very recent and we are on wayland by default this has been wayland for a couple of years so no, no surprises over here, really. Another thing which is new this time around is a significantly upgraded remote desktop method. So it says some settings are locked. We can always unlock this, provide our password. It authenticates and now you can remotely connect to your user account when it's not being used. The display resolution can be set from the remote, so you can enable this. You can set the host name and the port. You can also have login details, so you have to enable this for it to work and it took a second but that's okay and okay so this is the device name and it's not allowing me to enter any details the desktop sharing seems to be working fine just a remote problem seems to have an issue i'm not sure why this is but this is beta software so this is kind of expected it's not that big of a deal let's just move on to some of the other things that are new this time around with online accounts you have seen a upgrade so we had email calendar google nextcloud already even microsoft was there i think but now we have microsoft 365 or microsoft onedrive support so like it or not a lot of people do use it i use it as well especially for work so if i have to sync everything if i have to work from my personal machine uh, I don't think that's allowed, but you know, if I was running my own uh, personal projects, if I was doing freelance, this is what I would do. And it's very useful. Like it or not, a lot of people use it. So that's something which is really good to see being included by default. Now, there also have been a couple of additional improvements to the online accounts uh, related to this. So now the default web browser is used when signing into accounts as part of the account setup, which would be Epiphany. So this allows for a wide range of authentication methods, such as USB tokens. You also can create a new WebDAV account. So it would be this or WebDAV account, which, uh, which has been added. Now, this provides a generic method for integrating online accounts online contacts, calendars, and files into your GNOME experience. So that is really good. I haven't used this personally, but if you have, let me know down in the comments how it works and I might try it out in the future. This system section has totally been redesigned. We were already here a few minutes ago and now you have software updates, region and language, date and time, users, remote desktop, secure shell, and about, which is pretty good. You also have new touchpad settings this time around. So I really love how they have everything laid out. So they even have, so for mouse and touchpad, which is categorized as one page, they have, you can change left and right as primary buttons. Some of my left-handed friends do, and you can change the pointer speed. I think I like it at the default setting and okay. Wow. So for scroll direction, it really shows you the animation if you hover over the uh over the pictures that is really good a little gif like this really helps and please don't fight it fight down in the comments with gif and gif or gif and you also have mouse acceleration enabled by default and please turn this off if you are a competitive uh fps player or if you're trying to practice your aiming with your mouse uh turning this off will help you get a consistent experience um, with your mouse across a wide variety of operating systems and desktop environments. So that is something which is really exciting. I guess pointers, uh, apart from mouse and touchpad, I don't really have a trackpad. Let me read out to you what's new this time around. So you also have a secondary click functionality, uh, which provides configurations for how secondary clicks, often called as right clicks, are performed with a touchpad and includes options to use either two fingers on the pad or to click in the corner of the pad. The new setting also allows the disable touchpad while typing behavior to be turned off. Doing this allows touchpad movement to be combined with key presses, which can be necessary for some apps and games, but if you are just typing away at your keyboard and your touchpad has poor uh, palm support, uh, palm rejection, then keeping it disabled uh, would be the smarter path to take. Now let's talk about the appearance tab, which for me is one of the best tabs in the entire settings page. Honestly, I like seeing these wallpapers uh, as much as the next person. And 
I see a couple of new ones over here. So like the one by default that is applied is a dynamic wallpaper. So it's going to change, I guess, over time. And uh, if you choose dark mode, it's going to give you dark mode. So it, this is nighttime, even without dark mode, just because it's nighttime. So you can e trigger it either by having dark mode enabled or you can have it trigger uh, by keeping it at a day night schedule, which is what is offered by default. Apart from this, there have been a couple of accessibility improvements as well under the hood. So a significant modernization effort has been taken to improve performance, reliability, and also enable compatibility with Wayland and Sandbox apps in the future. So that is very good to see. A new sleep mode feature has been added, which will temporarily disable Orca. That's pretty good. And along with that, you also have a high contrast mode, which is now more consistent and usable and a new setting to show on and off symbols and switches. Apart from that, for a couple of system enhancements, you have beautiful fallback avatars. You also have enhanced notifications. I don't have notifications over here right now, but they are in a card style. So that is pretty good. You also have a new app window shortcut. So apps which have been pinned to the dash. So that would be these apps, you can launch them using super plus numbers. So for example, uh, software is at number four, so you could do super and number four, and it would launch the software app, which is really handy. So if you remember what, the, if you remember the ordering of your apps, you don't even have to open this, uh, you, you don't have to open the dock for accessing that. Another cool thing, which I like to see is inside disk usage. So, Let's just go to activity monitor or system monitor as we call it here and go to resources. There should be a new graph about disk usage. So there we go. So we have reading and total 1.5 gigabytes, total written and writing, beautiful graph. I, I love seeing graphs like this makes me really happy seeing different colors. While software catalog downloads, we have a couple of other things to talk about. So the network manager gets a new ability to address conflicts of duplicate IPv6 addresses in the same physical network. This is really important because Fedora 40 is always trying to improve itself and it also randomizes the MAC addresses for each Wi-Fi connection with a stable or individual address to reduce passive surveillance by internet service providers. So this in effect gives you a better privacy. Now that we're done with that, let's just go ahead and explore the software center because this is something which I, which I really like. I really love the GNOME experience for the software center. So you have pinned apps over here. I guess you're very familiar with these. And a couple of these apps, errands are part of what's now called GNOME Circle. Special apps developed for the GNOME desktop that's going to be seamlessly integrated with your desktop experience. If you want to keep your apps updated, what I would recommend you do is go to flat hub and you install this version because this version is not going to be tied down to your to the version of your operating system so that's pretty good you have screenshots over here uh, beautiful big cards and you also have a little bit of information you can show more and you also have the download size and it says this is potentially unsafe i don't really see a reason why apart from the fact that it clearly mentions it can read and write all of your data which is i guess needed for running for virtualizing an operating system and it works only on desktop and laptops which is fair enough and it does not have an age rating and this is also new for version 46 so it has a couple of features so you can check the new features or you can go to version history and you can check what was new in earlier versions and this is really comprehensive you also have a community built tab which allows you to see uh, like this app was developed in the open by an international community in the open gives me the feel that it was developed under the tree under a tree but whatever and it was released under a particular license you also have different links to go to related to the app you have a review system you have stars and reviews and you can also see other apps that were made by the gnome project that's really interesting you also have several categories to so create work play develop overall i really like the card system that they have going on it's beautiful and you have other tabs so installed tab and you also have plenty of updates so you can see right now they have changed from the release candidate over to the final 46.0 version so i'm not going to download right now because this is a test environment 
And yeah, I mean, this is amazing. Fedora Linux overall, very good, very simplistic. And I really love what GNOME has going on. Some people call it too minimalistic. I really love it. Everything that you would want is here. And if something is missing, you can always go ahead, download the extensions app and improve upon your functionality. So with that, we come to the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I knew this was a bit on the longer side, so I would really appreciate if you watched it. And thank you. And I'll catch you on the next side. Peace.